Almodovar quits the force to become a call girl. One day, a friend on the force tells her that her fantasy is to be a call girl, too, if only for one night. The next thing you know, Norma Jean is being charged with pandering, a charge usually reserved for heavy hitters, pimps and madams living off a stable of prostitutes. If convicted, in California, a panderer faces a mandatory sentence of three years in jail. Now, you might say there's no way anybody could make a charge like that stick in Norma Jean's case. Want to bet? The last time we saw Norma Jean Almodovar, really she nice. had two years and 11 months to go on the three-year sentence she was serving at the California State Prison in Frontera. It's so inconceivable that you get three years of your life taken away from you and you're put in here and you're put in the same circumstances as women who, who are in here for murder and violent crimes. If call girls are usually arrested one night and back at work the next, why did they throw the book at Norma Jean? Well, in this case, she feels the book they threw at her was her own, a book she called Cop to Call Girl, in which she was telling all about the LAPD. And this is basically a book about your... My life. Your life mm -hmm. as a member of the police department. And as a call girl. And as a call girl. Right. And this chapter, this, uh, mm -hmm. this chapter three, lists a, a number of stories involving members of the Los Angeles Police Department. Mm -hmm. I just wrote about the police corruption, about the things that were going on at the time I was on the police department. For example, what kinds of things were going on? Well, the police had a burglary ring. They had a murder-for-hire ring. Um, the cops were having sex with Explorer Scouts. Girl Scouts? Um, yeah, the, the young girls, and some of them even as young as 10 years of age. Um, they had a drug ring. They were having sex on duty with prostitutes. Um, they were... Well, they were, they were gambling, um, on duty sometimes, off duty. Most of those stories were a matter of record, but as far as we can tell, no policemen went to jail. Some were suspended from the force or transferred, but none served any time. If Norma Jean's book were published, it threatened to reopen those old wounds the LAPD was trying to live down. During her 10 years on the force, Norma Jean had also collected stories about the alleged sexual escapades of her fellow cops, and those were included in the book as well. Sex, money, and information, those are the three things they get from prostitutes. To make matters worse, she went public, went on the talk show circuit singing the praises of prostitution and promoting the book she was writing. The LAPD was not amused. You became a call girl because uh, you made the point that you've been sleeping with the guys on the force. You might as well get paid for it. Right. Yes. So we can only speculate on how the LAPD feels about Norma Jean Almada. They don't like me. They, they don't? No, they don't. So how did she get from here to the state penitentiary? Well, when we first met her last May, she told us about her friend and fellow traffic cop, Penny, the one who, she said, had the fantasy to become a call girl. She's, she told me when we were having lunch, she says, Gene Norma Jean, because I described my new life and how much better it was for me and how much happier I was. And she said, you know, Gene Norma Jean, I've always fantasized about being a call girl. And she said, you know, if I was young and attractive, I'd make a million dollars. She's not young and attractive, and she wouldn't make anything. But still, I didn't want to tell her that. So I said, well, if I ever find a client that would like your type, I'd be happy to let you know. And her type is... Tall, uh, overweight, and unattractive, and middle-aged. Not that middle-aged is bad, I mean, it's just not, not marketable as a, as a call girl. While she thought Penny was helping her, gathering information for the book, Penny was really working with the police. It was a classic sting operation. Penny wore a wire, and the police recorded their conversations. But how can that be used against you? Because that's called pandering. Since I called her up and asked her if she wanted to fulfill her fantasy. Pandering is an act, it's called encouraging a person to commit an act of prostitution. She said, what do I have to do? I said, nothing you haven't done in a normal adult relationship. That is a felony. That's called pandering. And that was my crime. They then arrested Norma Jean and accused her of trying to lead Penny into a life of prostitution, even though the only thing that took place was a series of conversations. The date they arranged never took place. The law said that I had to send her to state prison for three years, regardless. That's a mandatory minimum sentence. Yes. 
Judge Aurelio Munoz presided at Norma Jean's trial. The jury found her guilty of that one charge of pandering, but because Judge Munoz considered it to be such a minor offense, he ignored the mandatory sentence and gave her three years probation. And I just thought it was, you know, just too harsh a punishment as applied to her. She was, I think, 33 or 34 years old at the time, had no prior record, had never been in trouble before. And three years just seems a very, very stiff sentence. Three years for what? Pandering. And the act of pandering in her case was? Calling up a girlfriend or ex-girlfriend and asking her to sleep with somebody for $100. Three years for that? Yes, sir. There's something in the Constitution, I guess, about cruel and unusual punishment. Yes, sir. That's what I thought. I thought in this case, I thought that punishment was cruel and unusual. If Judge Munoz gave Norma Jean probation, what's she doing in jail? It seems the authorities didn't like her getting off with probation, said it wasn't in the judge's power to do that. And the next thing you know, an appeals court overruled the judge, and Norma Jean ended up here. Did you ever think it would come to this? I kind of had my suspicions it would, because when the district attorney appealed my probation, they seemed just really bent on putting me in prison to shut me up. Because I'm, you know, this is, what they're doing to me is wrong. They have no right. They had no right to arrest me in the first place. They had no right to confiscate my book. They had no right to appeal my probation. They don't appeal anybody's probation. Why did they appeal mine? I don't understand. If she wasn't writing a book, would your actions have been the same? Exactly. Would have been no different on my part. Harry Sondheim is the head of the appeals division. Assistant District Attorney Richard Weber was the prosecutor at Norma Jean's trial. The bottom of all this is criminal conduct. After all, pandering is a crime. It's a crime in California. It's a crime in, as far as I know, all the other states. She had her day in court. She stood before a jury of her peers, and they found her guilty. The judge looked at the evidence and said probation is the proper sentence for this person. Given her age, given her prior record, given the seriousness of the offense, she should be left to probation. You could have accepted that. The law did not require you to appeal. But if we chose to do, to ignore our duties as representatives of the people, yes, you're correct. We could have ignored it. As the police, perhaps, could have ignored when they first got informed of a violation of law. But that is not their duty either. Although the district attorneys maintain that Norma Jean's case was handled like any other, the fact is that in the last four years, despite the mandatory sentence, statistics show that the majority of persons convicted of pandering in Los Angeles County did not go to state prison. Most got probation. So there must be some way to dispose of these things to get around the law. They are just using this as a cop-out and a justification for unconscionable action. Harlan Braun, a prominent Los Angeles attorney, used to be an assistant DA. He knows how the system works. Yeah, I think this particular case, the fact that she was writing a book about the L.A. Police Department, and the police department obviously is tremendously influential, is the motivation behind the reason this woman is in prison. How do you mean the police department's influential? Well, the district attorney's office is politically responsive to its constituents. One of its main constituents is the police department. So any time you have a case where the police department has a stake in it, things go haywire, and basically the police control the prosecution. No one from the Los Angeles Police Department was permitted to appear on camera to talk about this case. They said it was because Norma Jean has brought a lawsuit against them. In fact, everyone connected with the LAPD, past or present, with whom we spoke, tried to get us not to do this story. If they had agreed to appear on the record, we would have asked them why so much time, effort, and money, taxpayers' money, was spent to put Norma Jean away. After all, it was her first offense. We also would have asked them how much irritation and embarrassment her book had caused them, and whether they so vigorously pursued this arrest and prosecution because she had publicly held the department up to ridicule. Last summer, just before they sent her to prison, instead of trying to placate all the people she was annoying, she did the opposite. She went back on the talk show circuit. I've got some advice for your audience, because now if you ever get 
raped, robbed, assaulted, or whatever, and you've got to call the police, don't tell them you're getting raped, robbed, assaulted. Tell them that Norma Jean's in your front yard pandering, and you'll have ten cop cars there. <laughs> You, you don't think that she brought this on herself? Well, I think if you if you take a public position and she obviously believes that prostitution is okay, and she said she was going to write a book, in that sense she brought it on herself, but in America you shouldn't go to state prison for three years because you write a book about the police department. From the LAPD investigation to the arrest to the interest shown by the district attorney to the concern over the book, in that case, do you think that the system worked for her? I think it'll go a little bit further. I don't think that, I mean, there's no question she got probably more interest than in the normal case, because normal, I mean, LAPD doesn't have to defend itself every case. I think that we're, to the extent that anybody's concerned about this case, and the reason that you're here right now talking to me, is because for this rather innocuous, for lack of a better term, set of facts, she's in state prison for three years when other people aren't who have done the same or worse. But however the arguments persist, Norma Jean still remains behind bars and will for the remainder of her sentence. She has just one ray of hope, that her request for a new trial will be granted and her conviction will be overturned. She says that whatever happens, that book will be published.